as we have learned, uh, oxygen is a drug and we should uh, treat it as a drug. What is it? Oh, sorry. The slide. We should uh, consider that uh, we have uh, some targets uh, that need to be followed. We have to know the physiology. We have to know the limit of the tools we are using to assess uh, the status of the patient. But what is important is that uh, we have to personalize uh, the therapy uh, uh, for each single patient. And this is what we did in, uh, in PISA as we assess oxygen therapy in COVID patient, uh, testing high VO2, then high uh, flow, and then uh, lung recruitment in a step-by-step -step, uh, approach. Uh, we know that uh, rising, uh, sorry, we know that rising uh, uh, VO2 uh, probably is useful in treating uh, ventilation perfusion uh, mismatch but uh, doesn't work if the patient has uh, a moderate or severe chance. So we have to assess uh, which patient require uh, only IFO2 compared to the other one which require a more invasive uh, ventilatory uh, support. And uh, we know that uh, IFO may be applied early in the stage of the disease, uh, probably it will help in reducing intubation rates and in preventing respiratory escalation. Uh, there are at the moment no study on uh, mortality, and so we, we probably require more, uh, more data about that. We also know that the high flow matched with the peak respiratory flow of the patient. Very important, uh, we can uh, give to the patient, administer to the patient an accurate VO2. Uh, Sometimes when the patient is breathing oxygen in venti mask, uh, if the respiratory rate is, is very high, it dilutes oxygen. So the real fio 2 is not uh, what we, we, we want. We know also that uh, high flow uh, reduce uh, uh, dead space of the airways and uh, probably increase the CO2 washout. And there is also a bit increase in uh, lung respiratory volume. So, uh, 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 what we do uh, if high flow uh, is not uh, sufficient is a further uh, increase in uh, ventilatory suspost. And the use of CPAP uh, probably includes the benefit of giving an high flow of gas with the, a constant and accurate uh, CO2 and uh, the possibility of recruit the lung with, uh, with PIP. Uh, CPAP may be applied in different settings. And this is very important when you have to, you have to, to use uh, an, an important number of, uh, of patients. Uh, what is important is that CPAP does not increase GT. And this is very important in probably preventing the self-induced uh, lung injury generated by other form of invas invasive or invasive ventilation. And we know that CPAP improve oxygenation and uh, release uh, the dyspnea of, uh, of the patient. What is in, sorry, okay. What, what is important to consider is also that CPAP reduce uh, shunt, improve uh, ventilatory perfusion, uh, prevents intubation, and uh, it, uh, it's very important because uh, we can modulate the PIP value according to the, to the stage of disease. We know that uh, in the early phase of the disease, probably the patient does not require a high value of PIP, but uh, in later on, the value may be, may be increased. And uh, sometimes in selected patient, when uh, uh, adequate resources uh, were available, a small number, number of patients were closely monitoring and the uh, PSV was applied, may be applied as a, a last step in, uh, in uh, non-invasive ventilation before, before intubation. What we have to consider when we use PSV, 
is that uh, patient may develop a, an important uh, transpulmonary pressure and so uh, may be exposed to a higher risk of uh, self-induced lung injury. And also we have considered that uh, at the moment the uh, CPAP performed with the helmet has a less mortality of uh, PSV performing with the helmet. So we have to consider PSV as a double uh, double uh, sword uh, uh, weapon and pay attention because uh, PSV uh, may uh, uh, induce in the patient uh, a, a, a tidal volume higher than uh, what we like, may increase the incidence of uh, asynchronous and uh, so may worsen the, the physiology of, of, of our patient. And uh, we have to, to pay attention that uh, PSV may prolong uh, ventilation and so may retard the intubation of, uh, of the patient. So what, 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 what is important to consider is a step-by-step -step approach that was uh, used to increase the, the support from uh, mini-invasive to uh, completely, totally invasive, like uh, ECMO in the uh, late uh, phases of, of disease. And uh, it, it, it's very important that uh, we can use different uh, tools to help in our decision. Uh, not only the clinical assessment of the patient that at the moment remain the most important uh, aspect we have to consider, but we can also use chest ultrasound. Probably we can use uh, the ultrasound of the diaphragm. Uh, we can uh, use uh, uh, different uh, value or different score just to try to uh, create, to adapt the right treatment for the right patient. And this is uh, at the moment uh, very, very, very difficult because there are no studies on the benefit of early versus late uh, intubation or the no studies that have significant uh, data on the non-invasive versus invasive ventilation. So probably we have to consider that more data are required. But I think that also in this field, the less uh, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is more. So we shall try to prevent uh, intubation in, uh, in this type of patient. And I thank you for the invitation again. Thank you.